I was willing to do a lot of the jobs that none of the other guys were willing to do because they didn't feel like they were worthy, like the jobs were worthy of them. Like I got to call the Super Bowl last week. Seven years ago, I was doing local like Fox Sports South or local regional network shows that you never even knew ever made a television screen. I was taking shows where I would go up to New York and be on like the pre 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 game digital for whatever network and I don't even know if anybody ever saw it. But like I was willing to do that stuff knowing that if I was gonna make a career out of this and if I was gonna be able to have opportunities to call real games and do real stuff on TV where people actually did see it, my only option was to be good at it. Like I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't the quarterback from New York City, I wouldn't play for the Dallas Cowboys, I know we all don't want to hear this, but Charlotte is a relatively mid-market as far as the TV networks are concerned. They're not, like, we don't really move the needle that much. I hate to break, trust me, it hurts my heart when they tell me that, but reality is reality, right? So I, I realized that pretty quickly, that if I was going to sit up on my high horse and, and feel like all these opportunities were beneath me, I was never going to really get anywhere. So back, you know, 2015, I went and did an audition, not even on TV. I went and did an audition out in LA. I was out in LA. They said, hey, you want to come over to the, I was on vacation. They're like, you want to come over to the Fox Studios in LA and do you want to do a, um, like, a, like a blind audition where you call a game that's already happened, like it's a TV copy, and they just put it on a TV, they just put it on a monitor in like a sterile studio. They bring in a play-by-play -play guy and you, they just strip out the audio. So you literally just call the game that happens to show up on the computer, it's very, on the screen. It's very strange, it's sterile, there's no energy, you're not in a stadium, it's not live. It's a weird feeling. But I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, I'll come as long as you want. Called it. And so it was like doing all of these little things allowed me to get in front of the decision makers. And then in 2017, my first like big opportunity, in 2017, Fox called me and said, hey, on your bye week, I was still playing. They're like, if you want on your bye week, do you want to join a three man booth um, with at the time the number two crew and call a game on your bye week? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, you might, you know, you might get some, people might not like it, they might not think it's good. I was like, I don't care, I'll do it. I was like, I'll be ready. I was like, I made my own call sheet. Now I have like a fancy, I'm like a guy who makes my call sheet, it's on a computer, and he prints it, and there's people who bring it to me. It's like, oh, it's nice. But at the time, <laughs> I would get like those folders, you know, like you'd put, put in your, your filing, filing cabinet, cabinet, like manila folders they call them. And I never worked at an office, so I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> you guys don't want me here, I wouldn't hear about that. But we could sit around and tell stories, I'd be great at that. Um, so, and then I had different color Sharpie markers and I would draw my O's and my X's and draw the guy, and I would hand write my board of depth chart and story. And I would just, I walked in, and they're like, what is that? I was like, this is my game board. They're like, we have people who do that. I'm like, I got it. So like did that in 2017, 2019 they invited me back on another bye week and was like, do you want to do a two man booth where now it's just a play by play guy and me. So I don't have the crutch of an additional analyst or if I don't have anything to say, that guy will talk, it was just me. So this guy would set it up and then when he stopped talking, if I didn't say anything, it would just be <laughs> quiet. So like, you know, you had to know your stuff because for three hours you were gonna have to talk. And um, so I guess to answer your question, there was nothing unique about what I did. I don't think there's anything unique about what I do now. I was willing to do things that everybody else was not willing to do, which was kind of my career. Like that was kind of my football career. I went to the University of Miami in 2003. We were Alabama, we were Georgia, like up today. Back in 2003, if you, there was no questions. Like if you went to Miami, it was like, you better be good because they were the best of the best. It's like if you sign with Georgia now, it's like, oh yeah, that's fun. Good luck, because there's 500 guys just like you and probably better. I learned really quick at Miami, coming from northern New Jersey, I was like, okay, um, these guys are different. Like these guys run faster than me, they're bigger than me, they're stronger than me. I'm gonna have to be willing to do things these guys aren't willing to do. And I did, and that was my entire career, and I carried with that through the NFL, I was never the biggest guy. I never looked the best in my uniform. I never had the biggest, uh, but that was just, I, I was very comfortable with what I was. And I knew the rules that I was playing by. 
And I knew in everything I did, I was just going to have to be willing to do things you were not, and I was going to do it a lot longer than you were willing to do it. And I would just, I would, I would just, I would always be you. I just really never let myself lose the battle. And it was the same thing in TV. Like, I have to compete against quarterbacks and Hall of Famers and all the guys that are coming for the job that I have. Tom Brady, I'm sure you all read those news articles last week. You couldn't escape it. But my, my answer every time was, I have all the respect in the world for Tom Brady. I mean, who doesn't, right? Like, he's the greatest. I get it. I understand why they went after him. But I'm not going to roll over and die. I'm not going to roll over, right? I mean, no, it's just, I'm willing to do what these guys aren't willing to do. And until they kick me out, I'm going to sit there and do it. I don't know. And, uh... Maybe he does come and take my job one day. I, I can live with that. I get it. I understand the rules that we all sign up for. I don't ask for anybody's sympathy. It's been awesome. And uh, I hope that answers your question.